It's yearly occurrence, y'all. Today, we're ranking all 30 NBA teams based on their watchability going into the next season. These are always really fun. I try my very best to watch as much basketball as possible, but some teams are going to get left in the dust. I got to be honest with you. These are all subjective opinions based on my preference on when I watch hoops. So if you disagree with something that is completely, completely okay, are we ready? Let's get into it. After a little bit of promotion, I just dropped the first episode of Small Ball with Kenny Beecham. Used to be known as the Kenny Beecham Podcast. I changed the name, changed the set, changed a lot of things. And in this first episode, we talked about the three most uh, difficult teams to predict for this upcoming season. As you can see, the, the, the Lakers are one. Oh, Lakers talk. Episode one. Yeah. Go check it out. This season, we got a bunch of guests lined up. We got a bunch of great topics. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be a journey. It's going to be a journey. So shout out to y'all. Go watch that episode. All right. So um, we got an S through F. Actually, I'm going to change F because I don't think there's any team without any redeeming factor. So instead of this, I'm going to put Bulls and, and, and <laughs> put the Bulls there because that's my favorite team. No matter what, I'm going to be watching pretty much every single game. Not pretty much every single game, regardless if we win one game or we win 82. They're in a the tier by themselves. It's, it's just the way it is. Okay. When it's your favorite team, you understand. All right. Starting off. Should I just go left to right? The Atlanta Hawks are the first team up. Obviously, the Atlanta Hawks still have Trey Young that automatically raises their watchability. But it's not a lot of other things that I'm really excited about. And Yekka Kong was going to be back and healthy this season. And I was really high on him going into last year. I think this team is a solid C. In the Eastern Conference, it should be a play-in team. Trey Young is going to give you his moments. And Zachary reaches Shea. Still don't know if I'm pronouncing that man's name right. He looked pretty good in the uh, the preseason game that we saw. But other than that, this is not a team I'm going to be tuning into every single game. They're just like middle of the pack. Then we get the Boston Celtics. Honestly, the Boston Celtics watch the bill. It's probably closer to an A. It's hard not to be interested in dominant teams, even if their brand of basketball is not extremely interesting to me. When you win a bunch, I always want to see exactly how you're doing that. So I'm putting them in the A tier. Brooklyn Nets are going to the D tier. I've been very candid about this. I think going into this season, the Brooklyn Nets might be the, the last team or the team I, I watch the least. Of course, they're going to have Cam Thomas, which is going to be a highlight machine, and he might average 25 points per game. I'm curious to see if Ben Simmons is going to do his thing after all of this talking. I'm curious to see what happens with uh, Cam Johnson and Dorian Finney-Smith. Like, they have players over there. But for the most part, we know what their goal is, and that is to win the lottery. And because of that, it just, it just, my foot is off the gas a little bit with them. They're definitely going to be a team I tune into occasionally. But for the most part, this is like, oh, Cam Thomas had 30. Let me watch Cam Thomas' 30 versus watching a full 80 or a full 82 game season slash 48 minute game. I made a video about it. I think I'm putting the Charlotte Hornets in B tier. I, this has this definitely has the ability to bite me in the butt. If Lamelo goes down for ten games, guess what? Out of those ten games, I'm probably watching one or two. Like Lamelo's whole health is really in, in, in like ingrained in my opinion about them or their watchability. Actually, because of that, I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down a little bit. Like some of these other teams, like Boston could lose their best player Jason Tatum for five games, and I would still watch the Boston Celtics. If Lamelo Ball is out for five games, that's gonna be a tough five game stretch for me to watch. So you know what? They're gonna go on the C tier. I don't want to jump the gun a little bit too much. My first B tier team is gonna be the Cleveland Cavaliers. They have the opportunity to go a little bit higher than that after what we saw from um, from Evan Mobley in the playoffs. And then the preseason game one, if he is out there with the kill, kill, kill mindset, I think this has the opportunity to go to A tier because Mob is one of my favorite players in the league. But as of right now, we know they're going to be like a 51 team every se season. You know Donovan Mitchell is going to get you a bunch of games. So he's dropping 30s, 40s, maybe an occasional 70 bomb. Uh, but I don't want to put them in the A tier. I'm putting them in the B tier. Dallas Mavericks immediately go to A tier. Coming off a championship push. Luka Doncic is such a, a great watch. Kyrie Irving is one of the best when it comes to watchability. And now Clay Thompson's on the team, which is cool. I'm just very interested, especially early in the season, to see what the Clay Thompson looks look like when Luka played. Because he just played his first preseason game, and it was okay, I guess. But there was no Luka Doncic. But I'm curious to see exactly what the idea of Clay Thompson on the team looks like. Derek Lively, this is something that's very interesting to me. Um, Derek Lively is showing that he can like evolve his game and he was already pretty good as a rookie but he's starting to well he's already a really good playmaker as, as as a five man but like going coast to coast off a rebound and maybe playing a little bit more european um there's an article i read earlier this morning that's kind of showcasing that and i'm very interested to that so i'm gonna say a tier Denver nuggets also go a tier you have the best player in the world automatically you're a super watchable team because not only is he the best player in the world he's like i mean he's an nba nerd's dream i guess right High percentage shooting, uh, great passes, full court passes from the five man. It's just got a lot there. Um, and this is a team that always ends up in A tier when it comes to watchability. Detroit Pistons. Um, this is an interesting. 
interesting one. I'm thinking between C and D tier for Detroit Pistons. Actually, I'm going to go C tier because I'm curious to see what new coach it can look like. I'm curious to see what now Cade Cunningham looks like when he has real spacing and real shooting. Jaden Ivey looks pretty okay in these few preseason games. I'm going to get him to C. I'm not putting them on the same tier as the Brooklyn Nets. Golden State Warriors are also going A tier for me. Like, I'm, I'm honestly, y'all, y'all know me. I am a basketball enjoyer. This is what I do. So, it, again, th th every team might be A tier. Every team might be A tier for me. But the Warriors still have Steph Curry. That's literally it. Houston Rockets will be my second B tier team. Um, I hope that they build off that last season when they were, what, 41 and 41. I mean, Thompson is one of my favorite players in the league, and I want to see what he looks like in year number two. And they already have an identity as a team that was kind of uh, drafted in the last, what, five lotteries, and then, you know, brought in Freddie, brought, brought in uh, Dylan, and so on and so forth, and they built an identity of being a top 10 defense, and I'm curious to see if that defense travels for a second season. I, actually, I need everything to travel this season because they were awful on the road, so travel to the opposing team's arena and win some damn games this year. Indiana Pacers, Indiana Pacers have S-tier potential. I genuinely do believe that. As a guy that loves defense, and I really do love defense, this is like the exception where I can watch some mediocre to like bad defense and still walk away like, man, that was fun because their brand of basketball is so, so elite. Like the score might be 140 to 138, but it's going to be a really good game. It's going to be a fun game. Tyrese has some boys running Pascal Siakam in his second year um, with the team. Are they my first S tier? I don't, I don't know. I can't give them my first S tier because I can't. Put them over these four. Like, that, that feels crazy. Is, am I going to get any S-tier teams? No, no, I'm looking at it. Is there a single S-tier team? Yeah, there are. I'm looking at the te teams remaining. There's definitely some S-tiers. And you know what? I might pull some teams from A-tier up. We're going we to we change this around as we get deeper into it. The Clippers are easily a C, like a, a low C-tier for me. Um, I just don't think this is going to be a really good season for them. I'm curious to see what Y looks like. He wants to play more games this year than last year, which is elite because it was his most healthy regular season in a long time. But losing Paul George, I feel like because I know what the ceiling of this team is, it's not as enjoyable. Like there are other teams out here that I understand the ceiling of, right? But I still find it more intriguing to watch Evan Mobley's progression or to watch Alfred Shingun's progression or even to watch the Warriors without Klay Thompson. Like these teams also have ceilings. The Clippers have a ceiling, but they also don't have any questions. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Like, I'm pretty I'm pretty confident in who they are as a team without Paul George. Like, yeah, could we see Kobe Brown look better? For sure. Could we see Jordan Miller look better? Absolutely. Like, there are some things there. But for the most part, these other teams, even if they have a, a definite ceiling, I'm more intrigued by some of their players than I am with the Clippers. So they'll probably be C tier. Lakers are going to go uh, B tier for me. Uh, even with the change of coaching, and I'm curious to see what that offense looks like for a full 82-game season, I, I, I still don't think they're in the same tier as these teams when it comes to watchability, even with Braun being there, even with Anthony Davis. The Memphis Grizzlies are... Wow, dude, am I going to have like one or two S-tier teams this whole season? That's kind of insane to think about. I'm changing it. The Warriors are an S-tier team for me, and here's why. I, I haven't been able to root for Steph Curry much in his NBA career. Like, I've always enjoyed Steph Curry. Don't get me wrong. He's one of the best players ever and super fun to watch. But as far as rooting for him, I've always looked at the Golden State Warriors as a neutral fan, right? Um, th this, this Olympics kind of changed that a little bit. It opened the eyes for me. They're like, I think it's okay to root for Steph Curry. And okay to maybe even root for the Warriors a little bit to, to have some success to get Steph Curry to a playoff series because that's where things go really well. So I might put them in my S tier earlier in the season. I also think they have some question marks as well. What is Kaminga going to look like in this new season? Uh, will Draymond Green stay out of trouble? Will AirPods take the 10 three-pointers a game that Steve Kerr wants? So, like, I'm putting them as my first S tier team. And because of that, I'm also going to put Pacers in S tier as well because of that great offense that I'm talking about. Now, now I feel like I'm balancing out my tiers. Yeah, okay, that feels good. Uh, I'm going to have the Grizzlies go A tier. I still think there are some question marks about the Grizzlies that I talked about in the podcast episode. You should check out. But as long as John Moran is playing, it's going to be it's going to be electric. As long as Desmond Bain is there, it's going to be electric. So I'm putting them easily in the A tier. Miami Heat, watchability is not never really the Heat's thing. Like, they could be a really good team. Even the team, the year where they were the one seed, I wouldn't call them the most watchable team in basketball. So I'm probably putting them... Uh, High C tier, low B tier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's fair. Milwaukee Bucks immediately go to A tier um, with the opportunity to go S tier. 
if Chris Middleton is healthy. Because when Chris Middleton is healthy, they're a dominant team. The problem is the man had two ankle surgeries in one offseason. So it's, I, I don't know if he'll be ever ready. Uh, Minnesota Timberwolves, because they have some huge question marks, I'm still putting them in the S tier. Last, last year, they were S tier team for me. This year, they're S tier team to me. I'm just curious to see what the Julius Randle experiment looks like for them. When you have a guy like Anthony Edwards, I think your watchability goes up. And y'all know I'm a defensive freak. So I love uh, Rudy Gobert's um, play. Next, we have the Pelicans. I think last year they were an A-tier team for me. I think this year as well. Sham Sarania just went on TV and said that they're starting Herb Jones at the five. That might be the craziest slash stupidest thing of all time um, or the greatest thing of all time. Who, know, who knows? And that's why they're A-tier. Obviously, Z is out for vengeance, which is always great if we can get a healthy season of Z. But if they're starting a 6'6 shooting guard at center, like I'm here to see what that looks like. Um, the Knicks are also going to be an S tier team. Obviously, they made all the adjustments in the world. They were already a really watchable team before they added McHale and Car Anthony Towns. And I think their identity will shift at least a little bit for this upcoming season. I, I'm curious to see what that looks like. I also think they're going to be a really good regular season team. And like I mentioned with the Celtics or some of these other teams, if you're a good team, it's hard for me not to say that you're super watchable. And the Knicks are going to be up there for sure. The Garden is going to be rocking. Everything is going to be great. OKC Thunder might be the most watchable team this season for me. They have everything I could want in a basketball team. They have a star player that can take over a fourth quarter. They have great defense. They have great role players and guys like Alex Caruso, Isaiah Hardenstein. They have up-and-coming players like J-Dub and Chet. They have a great coach with a great system and great plays. Like, they have literally everything that I personally want when it comes to watchability for an NBA team. And they should be winning a ton of NBA games, too. Orlando Magic, I'm going to put them in a the B tier, a team that grinds out every single game. Um, and that's a, good, that's a good thing. But it's not like they're super... I don't know they're, they're in a very similar mode as the Miami Heat. We're like, hey, we might score 98 points and we will still win that basketball game. And I think that that just takes a little bit down on the watchability aspect. I am curious to see what Palo year three looks like after watching the jump they took for year number two. But I'm going to put them in the B tier as I put the 76ers in the A tier. Um, ooh, part of me wants to put 76ers in the S tier. Maxi. PG and B, it's close. It's really, really close. I'm gonna keep them in the A tier for, for right now. Then we get the Phoenix Suns. Ah, uh, man. Um, they have the potential to be an S tier watchability team. Kevin Durant, fun watch. Devin Booker, fun watch. Point guard, bud system. Um, Nurk is shooting threes. <laughs> Ryan Dunn. Um, I might put them S tier to in watchability, man. Because I genuinely do believe that their system is gonna look a lot different in this year. Um, and I talked about that on the pod. Is, is this whole video just a podcast promo? Kind of. Um, I talked about it for like 30 minutes to Phoenix Sun. So um, I think they have the ability to be super watchable. Actually, I'm going to put them A tier. I'm going to put them A tier. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hedge my bet just a little bit, just in case things don't work out perfectly. And stand. even if they use the same system as last year, having Kevin Durant and Devin Booker automatically puts you in A tier. It has the potential to go S tier. Um, Portland Trailblazers will probably be on the same tier as the Brooklyn Nets. I also think this is going to be a season where they're, you know, going for lottery odds, which makes sense to me because they've had the lottery last couple of seasons and they're still looking for the guy. And it could be Shane Sharp eventually when he comes back from his torn labor. It could be Scoot Henderson still, but I'm sure they want to go into this draft class like, oh, Cooper Flag, Ace Bailey. And because of that, they, they got also a log jam at a bunch of different positions. That's a little interesting to me. But for the most part, I can't see myself. Being like, oh, the Trailblazers are on. Let me turn off this uh, Cavaliers game. Let me turn off this Rockets game. They're going to get watched a lot because they're a West Coast team and they're going to have the late game on a lot of these nights. But I, 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 D tier. I'm so intrigued by DeMar DeRozan being with the Kings that I'm thinking about putting them high B tier or low A tier. I mean, uh, preseason is not everything. In a lot of cases, it's not nothing. Um, but I was, I was interested to see him be perfect on the field, the DeMar DeRozan way, and the way they used him. Um, and I think this team will be fun. I mean, they've been fun for the last three years or so, but the added DeMar DeRose can add another element. Um, cool to kind of see DeMar DeRose and not be on my favorite team. And I mean, as a compliment to see him be able to play in a different system. Uh, I think I'm going to put them B tier though. San Antonio Spurs, same thing. High B tier. I know they got Wimby. I know they got my favorite player of all time, but I'm maybe not as sold on them as some of the other people across basketball. Wimby automatically puts them kind of A tier. Yeah. Let me, let me, what am I talking about? They're kind of A tier. Toronto Raptors is going to go C tier as well. I'm very, I, I, I love Dr. Ryakovich's system and everything. Um, Yaka Perdu told us that they're rebuilding. <laughs> Masai Ujiri said they're rebuilding as well. So I'm going to also put them in the C tier. Utah Jazz will be D tier as well for me. Uh, sorry, Jazz fans. I love me some Larry Market and I love me some Taylor Hendricks. But for the most part, I think this is another season where they're not looking to do much. And you can tell that by the roster. And lastly, the Washington Wizards are also D tier. 
Like that, that looks good, right? Like teams like the Memphis Grizzlies have opportunity to go up. The Bucks have an opportunity to go up. The Suns, the 76ers have, I, I, I'm close to putting 76ers S tier regardless. Um, I like this. And we'll see two months into the season how this changes. Because it always does, right? You get two weeks in, you're like, oh, this team is not as interesting as I thought they were going to be. Let me put them down a tier. Oh, this team is going crazy. They're going up a tier. Uh, either way, I think this is my official watchability rankings for this season. Um, I like it. I like it. Let me know what you think. What is going to be your three most watchable teams outside of your favorite team? Because we know you're going to watch your favorite team. Let me know in the comment section. Check out the episode, and I'll see y'all soon. Peace.